Hi, welcome to Classic Car Cave. Um, so, um, this is a bit of an update what's going on with the XK150. Um, and uh, you'll see some things in here, it might be quite surprising. Um, so, uh, we, we're, I, as I said before, I want to try and keep the Citroen because that's mainly welding and body work. Um, there is a lot of mechanical work to do, but I want to keep the two separate because it seems one's more interesting to people than the other rather than put a bit of a mishmash of both in it. Um, so, <clears throat> but the good news is, uh, which you'll see as you see the video, is that the door, door locks, the internal door locks, or the door locks to the B-pillars, they've been found by the uh, person that did the, organise the painting of the car, which uh, I'm really pleased about. I mean, you know, you've got to always look, try and look on the positive if you can. I mean, he could have said nothing and just kept them. But he hasn't. He's, he's passed. He's um, he sent a picture to uh, like a go-between for us because obviously we fell out about it. I was angry with him, and and he was angry at me for me being angry at him because I'd said to him, "It's your responsibility." They were in the car. I have the video to prove it, and we had a bit of a slanging match. And uh, so, but he's contacted Chris at XK Store and sent him a picture, and they were actually stuck under a machine. Now I remember the stuff when we went down there to pick it all up. It was lying on top of this machine, it's, it's some kind of plotter, I can't remember exactly what it does, but it's a big thing. And But they must have laid out these parts to, to, for us to get them because they've been painted, so they laid all the parts out, but this, it seems like these door locks were actually underneath the vehicle, uh, underneath the plotting machine. And there's some other hoses and bits, which is nothing to do with us, but, but the, obviously the arms are there. And that's a massive saving because it was well in excess of a thousand euros to get two new ones. And it's quite a faff trying to get the numbers, but they are available. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, yeah, um, uh, put a couple of hours in today and a couple of hours yesterday, but I had a bad night last night again. So I just hope this is not going to be a recurring thing or a long winded, you know, like a long COVID thing. It's not COVID, but a long flu. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. So we, uh, we had some problem with some smoke coming off it and we thought it was the belt. Actually what it is, it's this, this indicator for top dead center is hitting the rubber um, at the back here, which is the harmonic balancer. And it's actually caught, you can see there, it's on my finger. It's actually caught it, so we need to take this out. And uh, how, do you get them, how do you get them bolts out of there? You don't, I suppose. Anyway, that needs to come off, look. to get this off and somehow position it correctly. Unbelievable. That's what it is, it's been pinching right in there, in the back there, I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, we'll get that fixed, at least we know what it is now. I don't understand what that is as well. I wonder if that's the shit's come off the side of that. This, I think it is. See all this crap here? It's come off here, it's damaged that. I hope it hasn't damaged it too much. Take this. Have a look. Just found it today. Oh shit! Oh god! We'll see how far that goes. Right. Up. So we've I've worked out. I was looking at uh, looking back at some of the video, and you can see we've put the pointer now down here. <clears throat> so it's not it's uh, not digging into the harmonic balance of the way it was. Now, if you look at this sump, you can see here, there's a, a half circle, a little bit there, some damage there. This bolt is the brass is coming through. And this was immaculate, this sump. What they've done, I mean, I'm 100%, I've talked to Mir, he's here with me now. And we think what they've done is, because there was no steering column in it, and what we did when we moved it was we pushed the wheels round, because there was no steering column in it. They put a jack under that, and what they've done is they've caught the edge and that's what's pushed that uh, indicator for the top dead center underneath the harmonic balancer. And if, he, if I move this around a little bit, you can see the dents in it. You can see the round, fuck. That's exactly what's happened. Anyway, at least we know now. I'm working on this uh, electrical circuit 
And what we've done is, this is, this is the LED ones that are here now, and these are the original ones, the element type. And they'll turn it on and you can see the difference. Look at that. It's uh, obviously green. Um, yeah, so we'll change them all over to that. One of the holders is a little bit iffy, so we're going to swap that out. That's but the difference in, is massive, isn't it? It's like chalk and cheese, really. Look at that. Nice. Really nice. Uh, I mean, it's got all the LEDs in now, so... There we go, look at that. Um, and what we've realised is, if you, sorry if you could switch them back off. You see these blue, what we're going to do is take them off and put clear strips on there. If you, if you put them on, and I do that, you can see how good that, that light is coming through there with nothing on it. But we'll need to put something on, uh, otherwise the dust is going to get in and make a, a mess on the. So I'll take you around the front, it's done the front ones. You won't be able to get an idea because it's daylight, but you can see how, how good they look. And then dip. Okay, and then these are the side lights, but what we're going to do is try and put LEDs in them. I think we've got LEDs that will go in. Now this is another quadrant. Um, the XK150, this has got to be done, the clip's not tight enough. They were facing the front like this. The idea of this indicator is you can see from the, the dash whether the side lights are on or not. Now on the Mark II Jaguar, the other way around, so I don't know which way they light up best. We'll, we'll try and put the LEDs in them and see which way is best. And if it's better to the back, then we'll do that. I don't uh, see that being a problem. There you go. So, and then this is... It's starting on the setup for the back now, so you can see this is the bulb holder, and then the bulb is actually part of this uh, diode kit here. And then this will turn this into a stop lamp, and then this turns it. It's this one, isn't it? A square one. Uh, square one. Yeah, and this I think this turns it orange. This piece here. This yeah, is the this orange. This one is orange. This. And one this is one's red. the red. Yeah. So what you would have <coughs> what you would have had originally with one bulb holder, you must have had one bulb doing two jobs, was it? Yeah, I think I have some. Yeah. So probably what would have happened is is you had a stop light, and then when you indicated, it just indicated the same light. So you couldn't have a stop light and an indicator at the same time because it was one bulb, right? Oh look at that! Oh look at that! Nice. And how does that look through the lens? Just see this thing back up under. Hang on. It's again. You must just press. Because it's Take it off that. Just do more. You can see none of these are scripted. It's just as it comes. Raw, boys. Raw. So, okay. you got the indicator on. Okay, that's how it looks. Oh, look at that. That is unbelievable, isn't it? Perfect. Look at that. It's completely red. And then orange. Red, orange. And for my next trick. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> so this is the, the tunnel from the XK150. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually weld this completely around. We don't need a door in it. The, uh, with it when it had the moss box in it, you needed to unscrew this. I think there were screws in the corner or here and here, I believe. And that was so you could open this up and you could get to the dipstick, but it doesn't have a dipstick on the Tremac T5 box. So it's not required. So I'm going to weld it in and my carpet is not going to have the flap in it. Obviously, I don't need it. Um, you know, obviously we're building it into an S and changing the braking system and a lot of other things. I don't I'm not need to go for... Uh, patina or originality um, car is what it is it's a it's a gt car for my wife and i to enjoy going around europe and wherever so this is a job i have to do i weld all this in get it repainted and then we'll put the uh, this is a silent coat i've got a box and a half of this so that'll be for the inside uh, of the car so the floorings will be done separately can see it there. It's really good stuff. I've used it on a, the E-Type, I've used it on the Mini. It's really, really good gear. Uh, it's not cheap, but it's, it's quite heavy when you lift the box up. So that'll be another job. So I'll do all of these individually, so they can be taken out any time for repairs or whatever.
So you can see with this one that I've actually done a, a chamfer on the edge there and I've done it all the way around because the thing with this, with these, or the two that I have is one is for the E-Type spinner, I have on my E-Type and the other one fits the XK, the new ones on the XK so this is why I'm sure um, when I first contacted uh, uh, Lionel um, he asked me specifically about these dimensions um, but it's not possible to get them on the wrong way uh, because if you, if you see there I can turn that on easily and if I try it and do it that way oh actually it will go on ah aha okay that's something new ah and that doesn't sit right when you ah Okay, that's where the problem is, I think. Gary, if you're watching this, that's not actually, look, you see how tight it is to get it on, but if you push it at an angle, it will go on. I think that's where's, what's gone wrong, mate. See how, see how it's, if you do it at a slight angle like that, it will actually go on. Not, yeah, aha, uh -huh. that's probably why it's damaged. But it's still there. Um, so you can see there that that goes in absolutely straight. You're only touching it, and you can see that's a perfect contact point there and on this side. Um, and then when I put it on my E-type, you can see that I've used this on my E-type, and maybe you can see there's a slight dimple there on that side and that side where we've taken the wheels off. Hopefully you can see. It. I haven't done it to this one yet, but I will. I will chamfer them. <clears throat> but um, what I'll do is I'll get a piece of leather somebody made a really good comment about using maybe leather um, over the spinner um, so sorry I can do this with one hand there we go and you can see here that that would make a really that would make a really good system that it would it would certainly help it wouldn't it wouldn't hinder taking it off or on and that fits quite well I've even tried it with that sponge which is quite thick and it works with that as well and the only problem is it bites into the into the sponge there as you can see but a piece of leather I think is definitely the way to go but yeah so to carry on with this I think uh, that that's one thing you need to and I never noticed that before because I thought that goes on perfectly there left and right but if you want to do it the other way it doesn't it doesn't go on unless you put it on at an angle and I never knew you could do that there you go and that's what's wrong the profile's wrong then it's going to dig in I mean obviously the other thing as well is the tommy bar needs to be a complete or the breaker bar whatever you use it needs to be a complete 90 degree angle to that wheel obviously if you offset it now you can imagine if that isn't perfectly 90 degrees to it 90 yeah 90 you know if you had the bar sticking out here you would dig it in anyway uh, what does it say prevention is better than cure so anyway I'll do the other one now yeah, I never knew that could go on like that it does take a bit of fiddling but I suppose it would be depending on how bad the ears were I mean these are very very bad um, I'll have to try it on another one and see how that works out I've got one up here let me just try that just give me a second so, as you can see there I've got a little slight chamfer on that and that one's still straight this is the newer one but I'll do it to both of them uh, that's only um, I think a, uh, a 120 grip but I'll, I'll take it down so it's really nice and smooth but I think that cloth or the leather is definitely going to be the way to go so hopefully that's some help to uh, who, anybody who has this tool or a tool that's similar to it this is saucy uh, my e-type uh, wheel and again you can see if I try and offer that up if I offer that up it'll go straight straight on it no problem and if I try and offer it the other way around it's just a struggle so you can tell straight away if it's in the wrong position it doesn't go straight in there's something wrong so yeah, and you can see obviously on the E-type with the arch being the way it is. Could you imagine trying to hit that with that arch being that close? Just 
scary shit. And not only that, the, the bottom line for me is people bang on about, you know, bang on about Amos. Oh, sorry, it's a bit of a pun there. Uh, Richard Michael Owen was saying, you know, you, you don't, you haven't lived till you used a, um, I don't know, five pound hammer or four pound hammer. I would rather not use a hammer for the simple reason. And even Gary says he's going back to the hammer, hide or lead or copper, whatever. <clears throat> but there's no way that you can strike the first blow, and then ten or ten, ten or fifteen blows later have the same power in it. It's just no way. Um, uh, you're just going to use up a lot of energy. But the bottom line is with this is they don't need a torque setting because the braking is what's going to set the torque on it or is what's going to tighten it. So if you brake harder, it's going to torque up more and so on and so forth. So, you know, uh, to me, this is a good tool. It just needs to be used correctly. And I'm glad um, Gary brought this up. I'm sorry he had a problem with it, but I'm glad he brought it up because it, there are a few little anomalies there that could be made better, which is what we've done now. So. This is my thought on it anyway. Uh, hopefully it helps you out.